Hello and welcome to Scratch. I'm using the online version today. I don't have time to do a full tutorial of Heartbreaker, but I can at least go through all the scripts and explain them to you. So let me start with my sprite, the welcome sprite right here. This is the first sprite that shows whenever we click on the green flag, which is how we start our game. So how I got this cool effect of it kind of reading letters out is I had to make a lot of costumes. As you can see, every single letter is its own costume with a little cursor by it. So it appears as though it is actually typing out welcome to heartbreaker. So what I did is I had when green flag clicked show, switch to costume 1 which is the one with just a W, then it's going to repeat 41 times, it's going to wait 0.1 seconds and go to its next costume. After that it's going to forever switch between the background 42 and the costume 43. And this is because, um, as you notice, the cursor is blinking right there. Those are the last two costumes. So what this is telling it to do is make it appear as though my computer is looking like it's going to type something, but it's really not. When it receives start, it's going to hide, which is what this button right here um, broadcasts. With that, I'm going to talk about the stage really quickly. When the green flag is clicked, the stage starts playing the song, which is um, Heartbreaker, a uh, karaoke version. And it's also going to switch to background 4, which is this one right here. The start button shows up after 6 seconds whenever um, the green flag is clicked. Then when we click it, we have a little countdown here. And I'll explain that in just a second. So the countdown is actually the same sprite as our little start button. I thought that this would just be easier to do. We have 3, 2, 1 here. And um, whenever start is clicked, it broadcasts start, switches to costume 2, waits a second, switches to costume 3, wait another second, switch to costume 4, wait a second, and hides. We have this nice little countdown here. Whenever it broadcasts start, our stage switches to this background wait right here. And then it's going to wait three seconds, which is how long the countdown takes, and it's going to switch to this background here. So if we want to see how that works, we just need to click on start, changes our background, three, two, one, changes it again, and the game starts. So I'll start talking about the player first. Um, the player, what I did is at first I programmed the arrow keys, so she moves right, left, down, and up. How I did that is I got one right arrow key pressed, point in direction 90, move 10 steps. So what this tells the computer is whenever the key is pressed, which you can get right here, you just need to click on the little arrow and then change it to up arrow, down arrow, right arrow, left arrow. Um, then you go to motion, there's point in directions. This will make sure that the sprite is facing that way so whenever she moves steps, she goes the right way. So 90 is um, going with right, negative 90 is left, 0 is up, 180 is down. So that's all you need to do to program your arrow keys. Now, however, going to this location whenever the game starts to make sure she's not touching any of the monsters and automatically losing points, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a second. Whenever she receives start, which is the um, thing we just clicked, she will forever be checking to see if she's touching one of the monsters. If she's touching a monster, she's going to scream, and then she's going to move 10 steps to get away from it, and it'll change the variable lives by negative one, so she'll lose a life, and it'll also change the score dramatically. So I made the variables in data right here, and I have these showing. Also, whenever she receives start, she's going to repeat until hearts equals 10 or lives equals 0. She's going to change the score by negative 300 every one second. I do this because I want my players to play this game as quickly as they can. So the faster you play this game, the more points you're going to get because you lose 300 points every second. I also have this script down here that um, whenever the green flag is clicked, she's in charge of hiding all these variables just to make sure that um, they don't show because we don't want that showing at the beginning. Then she's going to hide herself. Then talking about variables, whenever she receives start, she's going to set the score to 5,000 so you already automatically have a score. Um, the timer is something I was experimenting with so that actually shouldn't even be there. Um, lives, you have three automatic lives. Um, then hearts to zero because you haven't collected any so far. Then she's going to wait three seconds because of the countdown and the variables are going to show and she's going to show. If she's touching the heart, then she's going to play a sound 
um, to show that she got the hearts and she's going to change the score dramatically and also change the hearts you're going to add one. So this forever if tells the computer to always be checking once the green flag is clicked to see if she's touching one of the hearts. The heart scripts really quickly. Um, you'll notice I have three hearts here. These two are actually for the end of the game whenever the user wins. So we'll be talking about those later on. For now, let's focus on heart one, which is the actual heart you need to touch to get hearts um, up here to win. So whenever the green flag is clicked, it's going to hide because we don't want it to show at the beginning of our game. Um, whenever it receives loss, it's going to hide. And same thing with one, because we want it to be only showing whenever you have this up and the user is actively playing. Whenever it receives start, it's going to wait three seconds before showing. Um, that's because of the countdown. And then it's going to a specific location because I didn't want it to touch the player accidentally, you know, to start, you know, where the player starts. So I have it just going here. So everyone starts with a heart in the same place, but then it moves to a random location, as you see in this script. This script reads, when the green flag is clicked forever, if touching player, then hide, go to, pick random negative 227 to 227 for X, and for Y, negative 169 and 169, then show again. So what this is saying is that the computer, once this is clicked, the green flag, it's going to always be checking to see if the player is touching the heart. And it's really important to have the forever and the if, because if you have just the if, then that's telling the computer that whenever the green flag is clicked, if it's touching the player, but that would mean that the player would have to click the green flag every single time they have the heart. So that's why it has to check forever. So this forever block is really useful for things like that. So since we just talked about the heart, which is how you get points, let's talk about how you lose lives. So that's by touching one of these little guys. You have five monsters here, and they're all set to kind of glide up and down like this. But they glide at random moments. You see um, it glides uh, from point five seconds to two seconds, 1.5 to five seconds, same with these. They're all set to completely random things. Um, they're all a little bit different. So they all have um, a different time when they go up and down, which can make the game pretty challenging. Whenever the green flag is clicked, they're all going to start where they need to be at the beginning. When the green flag is clicked, they're going to hide to ensure that the user does not see them um, kind of going around everywhere while that intro is playing. When they receive start, once again because of the countdown, they're going to wait three seconds before showing. And when they receive lost and when they receive won, they're going to hide. That way, whenever the player um, wins, they don't have to see the monsters going up and down um, again. Okay, so winning and losing. Um, I have these scripts under the player. They're right over here on the right. Um, whenever the player receives start, it'll forever be checking to see if lives is less than or equal to zero. If it is, then it'll broadcast loss, it'll hide, and it'll hide the variables hearts and lives, so these won't show anymore. When it receives start, it'll also forever be checking to see if hearts is equal to 10. If it is, this player will broadcast 1, it'll hide, and it'll hide the variables hearts and lives. And something I forgot to mention earlier is whenever it touches the monster, it also changes the ghost effect. Um, let me put this one into action so I can show you. See, it becomes a little ghost just to show you that you've been hit. And also, uh, I made it impossible to go uh, along the edges because whenever it goes on the edges, it bounces a little bit. So I just did that um, by having it point towards start, which is kind of the middle area where I had that start sprite and then it's going to bounce. So these two broadcasts are really important, the won and the loss, because pretty much every sprite is affected by this, almost. All the monsters hide whenever they receive loss, they all hide and they receive won. And then these won hearts um, show whenever they receive won. And what these guys do is um, they just kind of blink like that around. So that's something I kind of put together which I thought was kind of cool and they also change colors if we activate this one so that's just something that goes on whenever you win this game and of course the background changes as well whenever it receives lost it shows your score and it switches to backdrop 7 when it receives 1 it shows your score and it switches to background number 8 I hope that you enjoyed my little explanation of Heartbreaker 
Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, for those of you who are watching this for the digital core, I'll be seeing you in class either tomorrow or Friday. For the rest of you, I'll put the link to this project in the down bar as well. You can look inside and kind of play around with it, maybe do a remix if you feel like it. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching.